Hi guys, Brendan here. Um, I've got a Suzuki Swift 2005 model 1.5 litre petrol, pretty standard little thing, and we've just got a check engine light complaint. So I've been through with the customer our initial um, diagnostic charge, and they're happy to go ahead with. We're going to look into the light, and once we've got some evidence, we'll get back onto them if there's any further testing. So I haven't started the car, I haven't done anything, I've only just got down the details of the car on my little job card. Uh, we have seen this thing for servicing, so um, you are riding along with me at the start. I've selected the car and we're just going to go through and do a full car code scan. Okay, so a PO420, our good old friend, so the catalyst efficiency low, um, quite common on these Suzuki's. Um, we'll just let it go through with the rest of its scan. Okay, so we're all finished there. Um, detected four modules and we've got a few codes. Um, PO420 is what I'm most concerned with, but we'll go down and see what else we've got. The ABS, so we've got some problems going on there. He hasn't mentioned what the, the ABS light's been on. I'll, I'll have a look, we won't clear anything. And an engine speed, so okay, so two speed signals. So we're dealing with a couple of different faults, but whether those are just history codes, um, hard to say. So we're gonna go in and look at the engine first. Go on the engine module. Okay, so I don't believe I'll get freeze frame from an older 05 Suzuki, but we'll give it a shot. Nope, so there's usually something here that there's not. So we'll probably end up going out to OBD2 just to have a look at it. But while I'm here, I just want to check what data I've got available in Suzuki, because we may end up using the OBD2 data anyway. Okay, so obviously I'm most concerned with my oxygen sensors. I'm able to see um, both number one and bank one sensor two, so number two, I'm able to see both of those oxygen sensors. So that's good. And you'll notice that bank one sensor two is up at 1275 millivolts at the moment. So we've got a, a bias voltage working there at the moment. We'll see how that reacts once we start the car and it starts to heat up. Let's go down and just get an idea of what else I've got here. We'll obviously be checking our fuel trims to see if we've got any um, engine problems that could have caused this. Okay, good. So I'm going to go back to home and I'm going to get into OBD2. I'm going to have a look at the freeze frame data just to get an idea of when this code's set. Okay, so first we'll see that it's set the same code in OBD2. Has that's a PO420. Trying to go back, and we'll see if we get some freeze frame data. And we do so, although it's not available in the Suzuki section, uh, we can get to it in the OBD2, um, like you usually can for most emissions based faults. Um, so, definitely handy to know how to do that on your scanner. Most are able to do it. So, you can see this thing it was about 2000 RPM, 20% um, throttle. We're in closed loop. The coolant was at 93 degrees, um, 10 grams per second. I'm looking for a vehicle speed, 75. Okay, so we're building up 38% load. So we're building a bit of a model. We're, we're cruising along at 75 um, K an hour. Nothing too special there. I always like to just save that just in case we need, want to use it later. We may also be able to go into mode six data and um, there's likely the catalyst efficiency test in there that it uses to actually set that code. So we've got oxygen sensor, sensor monitoring. Um, sometimes it'll come up in there. We may see it in onboard monitored systems, but it's, um, you never sort of know what you're gonna get unless you're an expert on the manufacturer. Okay, so one of these could be a catalyst efficiency test. Now, are we gonna go through them all? That's up to you. I feel this will be a pretty cut and dry case, but you know, if, we, if you wanted to go through them and click into them, this is a general idea of the kind of thing that you'll see in mode six. So a component, which we have no idea, you know, component dollar sign 05 could be a coolant temp sensor. Um, dollar sign 00 could be something else. Um, only factory data will show you that. The test was for a minimum of not applicable and a max of 125 and it got a value of zero. I have no idea what that test is for and no one would unless they had the factory data. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of those and try and find the catalyst monitor. It would be nice, but 
I usually check it if it's um if it's you know the hexadecimal code is converted and it, it reads catalyst monitor then why not click it I'm going to check DTC's last drive see if this code's set on the last drive or if this is a history thing that's been a while it did so it's something that should be able to be recreated if needed usually it'll take two drive cycles but that's good information to show this isn't something from a couple of months ago this has happened pretty recently let's go into o2 monitoring just for fun okay can't do it on this one no problem again it's just a, a nice quick thing to see that they've passed with flying colors but we cannot get to that on this one now because it's emissions based stuff no real need to go back out to um to our our suzuki section i'll just go into obd2 here and we should be able to see our oxygen sensors no problem and our fuel trims so i'm going to select my own custom data list speed up the um, refresh rate of the scan tool no need to be viewing absolutely everything So I'm concerned with my short-term and long-term fuel trim, my bank one sensor one, and my bank one sensor two. Um, if I need to, I'll look into why it's got the the other short-term fuel trims there, but I'm just going to take that what's likely to be an averaged value that's already up there. Uh, let's look at the distance while mill active as well. That might give us a an insight into how long this has been a problem. Oh, sorry. Get you back centered. I have noticed this Solus Ultra is a bit slower than my Solus Edge, if anyone's interested in, in going between the two. Not unusable, but noticeable. Little things like this. You gotta press a button and it doesn't like it. Okay, so this car's dead cold. Um, it's been sitting in the car park most of the day. Um, later in the day and we're just starting it so we're going to start it up from dead cold and watch, watch how this all reacts so I'm expecting that um, on our sensor 2 that's oxygen sensor bank 1 sensor 2 I'm expecting eventually that's going to um, drag down we've got a bias voltage on it at the moment by the look of it um, I like how oxygen sensor bank one, sensor one, this guy started to react very quickly. Um, I'm not, you know, no need to go and check heaters or anything. That's obviously working well, the heater in that. Just to give you a shot, we do have a check engine light. We don't have any ABS light. I'll talk to them about that if they want to look into the separate issue. But just the check engine light we're worried about at the moment. And I'm just going to let this go with um, no throttle. And we're going to see if the rear one wants to come on board usually takes quite a while so far noticeably the car runs quite well obviously no misfires no didn't see any smoke out the back nothing crazy and I'm gonna give a little bit of throttle and give that rear row to a bit of a helping hand so, so I'm up to about two and a half grand now Finally, after about a minute or so at 2500 RPM, that bank one sensor two is starting to come online. It's starting to drop that um, bias voltage down, or it could be a floating ground. Um, I'm, I'm not too cluey on the electronics of that side of it, but whatever you want to call it, um, for those that know more than me, the it's starting to react now and we're starting to get a true reading out of it. So, right now with a cold catalyst it's almost mirroring the front O2 but we need to give this catalyst some time to warm up and start doing its job if this if this car had been driven it's red hot and it was doing this then yeah shut the books the cat is not working but we'll give it some time give it the benefit of the doubt so I'm still I'm holding it up at about 3,000 rpm at the moment So just to get a bit more detail to rescale that bank one sensor two there, since it's still up at a, you know, it's max was 1.2 volts, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get back in, and that will rescale it down to its current minimum and maximum. And that'll give me a little bit more detail. Okay, 
downside of that is I will have to select it all again. So there we go, we've rescaled. So we're using the full amplitude of our graph now for that rear oxygen sensor, just to get a bit more detail. And we can see it's still basically following the front one. It's not looking good. I'm going to go down and check the distance. So 3,000 Ks or so since the check engine light came on. Now to give this thing the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to go out and go for a few um, very high load runs, high throttle, try and get some real heat into this catalyst and then we can check before we even attempt anything like a, a catalyst oxygen storage test or anything like that, which it might not even be able to do on this because it is that poor by the look of it. Just let off the throttle now. And you can see that big lean drop happened basically the exact instant on both the front and rear O2s. Um, both fuel trims are looking good throughout those two load ranges of cruise and idle and I'll bring you back when I've gone for a hard drive. Actually there we before we before we cut out so this is something I see very often with the Suzuki's. So see now how we're at 700 millivolts for our rear O2. We're looking good. This is this is what we wanted. So what I tend to find with them is they handle the lower gas flow of idle quite well as if there's enough um, precious metal left in the catalyst to do its job of consuming oxygen because it's consuming oxygen to use in a catalytic effect we're not seeing much oxygen from that rear two rear o2 hence the higher voltage of 0.7 if we were seeing a lot um, more oxygen then we'd have a lower reading around the 0 0.4 0 0.3 something of that sort and once we start to bring up the revs which i'll do again so i'm going to go to call it two and a half grand or so again I suspect that we will likely start to see it mirror the front O2 again because there's not enough precious metal there for it to handle this much oxygen capacity, oxygen storage to do its catalytic function. So we're starting to see a few more cross counts and those cross counts are what the ECU is likely using to dob this cat in and say not efficient enough. So we're seeing too many cross counts from the rear O2. I'm going to go for a good hard drive. I'll bring you back in if I need to, but I suspect it's going to look exactly the same and we'll quickly recheck. Okay, so the cat is now red hot, giving it the best chance it can to work. You can, I've brought up the throttle position now with the um, bank one, the sensor one and sensor two. So we can see when I was at idle, no throttle position, it's still handling quite well, but then I bring up just a little bit of throttle um, pretty similar to the conditions that the freeze frame would have shown us, so just cruising along, more gas flow, and it can't handle, looks absolutely terrible. Um, I'll do one more quick, like this is, it's, this is conclusive enough, but we'll do one more quick test just to show you a, a poor result of an oxygen storage test. What we're going to do is go full throttle, and when I let off, there should be a delay. So when we go full throttle, we're creating a rich condition, um, enrichment. So we should see the O2s go completely pegged rich. We're creating a very oxygen poor environment. When I let off the throttle, you go into D cell, the injectors will get turned off. We have a very oxygen rich environment. The front O2 should register that immediately. The rear O2 should absorb some oxygen. In, um, sorry, the rear O2 will not see it immediately because the catalyst will absorb some oxygen. Eventually, once it's reached saturation, the oxygen then will, any remaining oxygen will then travel through to the rear O2 and it should um, pick it up. So what I expect to see on this is pretty much no delay, whereas a good one would have a good delay. Now, ideally, you know, if you're really splitting hairs, do this on a scope or something, but a quick dirty test like this on a scanner is enough to show our point here. So I'm just gonna go full throttle, third gear, and then I release. So we can see our nice rich condition, both from dropping off pretty much instantly, and um, we can zoom in and that kind of thing, but I think it's quite conclusive. So I'm gonna take this one back, um, do a couple of basic checks, oil level, you know, we're not consuming too much. Um, we have been servicing this thing, so I've got a full service record of it. Hasn't missed too many things, so I know when the plugs were done, all that kind of thing. It's running well, so as long as I see no major issues, no coolant loss, anything like that, I'm going to be recommending a new catalyst.